Masks and the way we think of them have come a long way. We were told early on they're mostly for protecting others. Because it prevents you from breathing or, or, or speaking uh, moistly on them. Oh, what a terrible image. Remember that? A lot's changed in a year. And now more contagious, potentially more dangerous variants have some asking, is it time for an upgrade? To rely on our masks, not just as a way of protecting others, but ourselves too. What are we looking at here? What is this? So this is a commercially available quantitative fit tester for respirators. If the to find out, we went to the University of Toronto's Dalla School of Public Health, where Paul Bozak can measure just how well a mask works. This measures what exactly? There are two hoses attached here. One is measuring the dust or the ambient particles on the inside of the mask. The other one is measuring the particles on the outside of the mask. Now, all of these masks, except for the pink cloth mask, have already been tested to show the material filters out at least 95% of airborne particles. So what we're focusing on today is what difference the fit can make. So I have to insert a probe through that. We start with a standard three-ply surgical mask. So now if you put that on, we'll be able to tell you what level of protection you're getting. So I'm breathing normally right now. What does this tell us? This is telling us you're getting a fit factor of two. Is that good or bad? That's bad. To get an, an N95 to pass on this kind of a test, you need a fit factor of 100. With your fit factor of two, you're only stopping about half the particles. But what are you telling me, that this isn't protecting me? This is not meant to protect you. This is meant to protect me. And that could be a problem. Scientists have been sounding the alarm over a growing body of evidence suggesting this coronavirus is airborne. And some governments have made changes accordingly. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control now recommends putting a second cloth mask on top of a surgical mask to tighten the fit. So I'll take this off. And I'll put this on, thank you. We decided to try that out as well. There. The more layers you have, the harder it is to breathe. Here, you're getting somewhere between 80 and 85% of the particles actually being stopped. A bit better, but there's still room for improvement. So next, we move on to a mask that more closely resembles the N95. So this one is a KN95. That means it satisfies the requirements of the Chinese uh, standard. There might be a few loose spots here, but that's because of the shape of your face. But as you're moving your face around, you can see the number keeps dropping, going below 100. And when I lean forward, just watch as the dial heads into the red. Uh, the other thing is the ear loops don't necessarily hold it as tight as the straps on an N95. Uh, you can get good protection, but it doesn't guarantee that it's going to always protect you. Right. You, you have to worry about the fit, shaping it every time. So we're still for that reason, like this ear loop style isn't right, for like medical it. use, uh, but it did block 98% of particles when the fit uh, wasn't uh, compromised. This one is a Canadian-made N95. Okay, well, let's give it a whirl. And finally, the last one. We check out an N95 with a double headband. One has to go under your ear, and that one, yeah, that one stays on top. You, Those you straps that, help keep a right tight spot. seal. Yeah, yeah. Okay, side to side, so go to the right and hold it there. And on my face, breaths. this one fit best, but it just goes to show you, it's gonna vary for everyone. Up, take a couple of breaths, and then down, take a couple of breaths. Now, the style of mask and the level of protection you choose, that's up to you. But if you do decide to upgrade, a couple things to keep in mind. First, nothing is 100%. So it's still important to follow public health guidelines, physical distancing, that sort of thing. But the other thing is, look for a mask that has been authorized either by Health Canada or the FDA in the United States. Both have searchable lists that you can find online. Health Canada and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control also have lists of masks that have been recalled or found to be counterfeit. Because the consequence of picking up a counterfeit is that the protective quality would be what? I know we've tested masks that have been uh, been well below 60%, for example, when they've been supposedly certified to be above 95%. In your everyday life, do you wear an N95 quality mask? I wear a KN95 uh, because of the convenience of putting it on and off. And I'm presuming that uh, between the other measures I'm taking, the public health measures, that I'm protecting myself adequately. Mm. But you don't think this is good enough? Oh, no, I wouldn't wear that on its own, no.